Hi everyone, this is the revision uh, lecture on refraction, refractive index and total internal reflection. This bit of the lecture covers about half of what you need to know about light in separate physics. We're going to do what is refraction, just in case anyone's forgotten from Key Stage 3. We're going to do refractive index, which is the trickiest idea probably in this unit. And then we're going to use that to calculate angles of refraction. And then we're going to look at what happens if refraction can't happen in total internal reflection. So, in case you've forgotten what refraction is all about, let's just remind ourselves. This is an experiment you'll have done in Key Stage 3 and maybe just had a quick look at this year. So here's a ray of light. It's shone at a rectangular glass block. You'll notice we always draw this line to measure our angles from at right angles to the block. This is called the normal line. If we turn the ray box on, we get a nice beam of light there so we can show what's happened. We're going to show all the angles in this so that we can see clearly what's happening. And as we tilt the ray, so it's at bigger and bigger angles of incidence, we get an angle of refraction. The angle of refraction gets bigger, but the key thing to notice is the angle of refraction is smaller than the angle of incidence. It's refracting, as we say, towards the normal. This happens because the light slows down as it goes into the glass. As it comes out of the glass, this is the angle of incidence because it's coming into the junction at this angle and it speeds up as it leaves. So the angle of refraction is bigger than the angle of incidence. That's the basic principle of refraction. You see, I can move this round to any angle I like. I can go to the other side of the normal and we always get the same sort of pattern. Okay, so that gets us on to refractive index. Here's a couple of blocks. We shine a ray of light at this perspex block. It goes there. We shine a light at the glass block. It goes to a different angle. What does this tell us? They've got the same angle of incidence, but they've got different angles of refraction. Why does this happen? Well, it happens because they've got this different property called refractive index, and refractive index is a measure of how much the light slows down. Which one's slowing the light down more? Well, it must be the glass, because the glass is the one that's bending the light more. The light bends because it slows down. If it bends more, it must be slowing down more. We call this measure refractive index. It's a ratio of how much the light slows down by, so the refractive index of glass is higher. We can do an experiment to show this because the angles look quite difficult. There isn't an obvious pattern between these numbers and these numbers. You'll notice at the start, this is only 3 below this, or it's 0.7 times it, whereas by the end it's about half, and there's a much bigger difference in the ratios. But if we work out the signs of the two angles, okay, then we plot those on a graph, we get a much clearer pattern, a nice straight line relationship. So the angle of incidence um, and the angle of refraction are proportional, okay? And because we can see that, this is quite an important concept in lots of things in year 11. It's straight and it goes through the origin. If we extend that line back, it's going to go to naught naught. And the gradient of this line is the refractive index. That gives us an equation. The refractive index is sine i over sine r. This is our definition for refractive index. And it's going to be really useful to us to work out, if we know the angle of incidence, to work out what the angle of refraction is. It does require some tricky maths, okay, so you need to have a little bit of practice at these to see if you can work out the missing quantities. Okay, in this case for glass, it's 1.5, but the point is this number is different according to the material that you're using. So just a little bit of an example to help us see if we can understand. Here's the equation, here's the possible question. So calculate the refractive index of a material that bends light with an incident angle of 51 to a refractive angle of 31. Okay, this is really just a test if you can put these numbers into your calculator. There's a few little tricky bits, that's why you need to make sure that you're used to your calculator. Make sure you turn up to the exam with one that you can use and make sure it's a scientific one because you are not going to be able to work out signs unless you've got a scientific calculator. Okay, so have a little go at this. If you've got a calculator handy, type in sine 51 divided by sine 31. Okay, that should give you, if you make sure you close the brackets afterwards because the 
calculator will open a bracket but it won't close it that should give you 1.5 that's the value for refractive index you'll always get a number more than one because the light slows down it'll never speed up it can't go faster than it's going through the air so if you get this number and it comes to be less than one you've gone wrong okay a slightly harder question if we know the angle of incidence and we know the refractive index can we work out the angle of refraction well same equation got to do a triangle if you're a triangle kind of person and we're trying to work out the angle of incidence uh, sorry beg your pardon the angle of refraction so you rearrange that put your hand over this one we get sine i over refractive index so you do sine 30 that's the angle of incidence divided by 1.5 that's the refractive index it gives you 0.33 but be careful because that's not the angle that we're looking for. That's the sine R that we've just worked out. So again, you need a little bit of practice, perhaps on your calculator, to make sure you can do sine minus 1. And sine minus 1 of 0 0.3, the inverse sine, gives you 19.2 degrees. Again, you've always got a little check. 19.2 is less than 30. It will always be refracted towards the normal.